the marketers and mainstream media are all abuzz with the news that the Bitcoin ETF options have been approved and will begin trading. For the people that understand, options are a derivative product. The question is, are options trading on the Bitcoin ETF shares actually good for Bitcoin? All right, it's no surprise that Legacy Finance is really excited about the Bitcoin ETF options trading. Now, um, th there's obviously a lot of, I I'd say, misinformation uh, that's out there because I am seeing a lot of the the cheerleaders talk about how you know how good this is for Bitcoin, how much uh, essentially um, this is going to help uh, Bitcoin adoption and you know, essentially increase the, the market cap. And of course, right, the bottom line is to, quote unquote, increase the uh, nominal value or the nominal trade value of Bitcoin. Before we continue, let's just, we'll, we'll start at least with the definition, right, of what options trading is. Okay, so it's the practice of buying or selling contracts that give the buyer the right to buy or sell an asset at a specific price within a set time frame. Options are a type of derivative security, meaning they derive their value from the price of another asset known as the underlying asset. Now, um, quite simply, these options on the Bitcoin ETFs uh, you're not, these options are not options to purchase or sell Bitcoin, right? These options are for purchasing or selling the shares of the ETF. Okay. And this is why it's called a derivative product. Now I know that many people, um, obviously more educated people than me would probably argue this differently, but I believe that the shares themselves are a derivative product because the shares are not the asset itself, Bitcoin, is the network and is the asset. But nevertheless, nevertheless, this type of news, right? This type of hopium is really gain is really uh, designed in order to get mainstream retail tradfi um, customers to pay attention. This isn't, this isn't about Bitcoiners, right? Like Bitcoiners aren't just going to sit there and be like, oh, nice options trading. Here I go. Um, if you are a person who desires to hold Bitcoin for Bitcoin's qualities of the government censorship resistance, the hard cap, all of the good stuff, well, you don't really care about this. These are just financialization tools. But nevertheless, nevertheless, it doesn't stop the marketing machine from doing what it does best. So we're gonna take a look at this article over here out of Crypto Slate, and right away, Bitcoin derivative market shows immense growth potential dwarfed 279 times by traditional counterparts. What does this mean? This means that Bitcoin, the, the, the overall market cap for this product is 279 times smaller than the current options, products that are out there. So right there, right? That's the carrot on the end of the stick. You don't know how big this is going to be. Take a look, right? 279X, right? Right there's the number, 279X. And, and that's that's what gets melted into our animal brain, right? You're picturing every single number times 279. <laughs> and they've got this really nice chart over here just to show that, right? Here's the derivatives market size relative to the underlying market size, guys. And take a look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin is like a sli it's, it's, it's a sliver at the bottom there on the floor. So again, guys, massive potential, right? Massive potential. Okay, but at the same time, right, as all of this is happening, um, people in the space are are questioning, right? Because let's face it, nine out of the, or nine, eight or nine out of the 11 ETFs are all custodied with Coinbase. And and we all know, right? We I did a clip about this last week, right? How secure is your Bitcoin with Coinbase? Um, Brian Armstrong himself said that they are audited by Deloitte. So you have to take Deloitte's word for what they have. Now, interestingly enough, there was a tweet that came out of Bitcoin Archive on September 23rd, which, mind you, is after the derivatives trading was approved for Bitcoin ETFs. 
And specifically the messaging, which I do think is curious, is this. BlackRock now requires Coinbase to deposit Bitcoin directly on chain within 12 hours of instruction after concerns were raised. It was selling paper BTC to the ETFs. So I, I do think that that's absolutely hilarious, right? Because... Um, Larry Fink and BlackRock want to actually have Bitcoin, but everybody else is being sold this derivatives paper shitcoin. Um, but look, I mean, it, it does it does raise an important it does raise an important concern. It does raise an important question. Uh, we saw, quote unquote, trusted institutions in the last cycle, right? Um, that all of a sudden went belly up. Now. I can say that myself, I didn't trust these institutions, but according to the mainstream media and according to the the, the well-known influencers and cheerleaders, um, these services, nothing could go wrong. They were relatively res risk-free. And Eric Balkunas uh, sang to this similar tune saying, BlackRock runs their own blockchain node and every night they pull the BTC balances from their wallet addresses on Coinbase Prime, validating the BTC held by iBit. They'll show this to institutional clients upon request, but they're not going to publish to the world because they get plenty of spam already. Uh, example, sanctioned B, uh, Bitcoin NFTs, and this would only cause an explosion in said spam. Just know that this is not amateur hour. BlackRock has like 500 ETFs which store the holdings with custodians and has been doing this for decades without a hitch. This is why them and other ETF issuers are trusted by American advisors so much they know their clients won't get SBF'd. Okay, so, of course, you know, you've got the wonderful words from Eric. And um, I'm pretty sure that people who invested in Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns, um, I'm pretty sure that they also thought that these were staples of American life. I can tell you um, that the, the investors in Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae that lost over 90% of their shareholder value during the uh, the 2007-2008 mortgage crisis, I'm pretty sure that they thought they were also investing in um, secured institutions, and yet, and yet something something went wrong. And of course, right? Of course, the you know the um, uh, the people that are in uh, legacy finance will give you every excuse uh, under the sun as to why this was different. Okay, and this time it's different, guys. Look. These derivatives, these options, okay? The reality is, is that options on Bitcoin will not and do not necessarily equate, okay, more Bitcoin adoption. It does not necessarily equate or increase Bitcoin usage either, okay? All this is, truthfully, truthfully, is paper Bitcoin on top of paper Bitcoin. It may bring attention to the space. But make no mistake, this is fuel for bubbles. That's all this is. And as I've said in the past, they are building the biggest financial bubble that we've seen in human history. And I believe that they're going to be using all of these instruments to do it. Bitcoin may be a lifeboat for us, but for the financial institutions, it's a brand new it's a, it's a brand new mechanism to build the biggest bubble we've ever seen. Anyways, uh, yeah, that's my take on the. So look, the options uh, to me that they're, they're a giant nothing burger. I, I get it, right? The financial institutions and all the people, the tradfi people, they're all really excited because now they get to have this whole new financial instrument that they get to work with. Uh, but in the end, um, this is this is not Bitcoin. It's it's just like I said, it's paper Bitcoin on top of paper paper Bitcoin. All right, guys, I will catch you tomorrow. <laughs>